Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten, and I wanted to shoot, shoot a little quick video this morning. Um, it's another conversational piece, and the topic today is going to be sisterhood and how we can have more productive um, sisterhoods together. Um, basically, today I wanted to uh, talk to women that find it challenging to connect to other women because I'm one of those women and I have to admit my shortcoming my shortcomings on sisterhood was because I didn't have any sisters so I only had brothers and so I think a little differently than most I ain't gonna say most than some women I think a little differently and so I think because I was reared around nothing but boys and I think differently. I think that I respond to different situations differently and that could kind of be kind of off-putting um, sometimes with other women because, you know, and, and let me tell you what I mean. Like say for instance, um, most of the time in sisterhood or sisters, women in general, like say for instance, they'll have a problem and they'll have a situation and then they all kind of like come together and they all just kind of like, um, you know, talk their issues out, cry, do whatever they want to do, complain. And at the end of the day, nothing is resolved, nothing is solved. They just wanted to, I guess, just to um, get it off their chest. Um, but nothing's really resolved. Me, on the other hand, if I'm invited to that little group or that little powwow, I'm going to be talking about <laughs> solving those issues, solving those problems. And it just didn't you know that's what i seen in my in the beginning of me trying to develop a great sisterhood with the people connected or the people around me i found that was one of my challenges and i think that we all have to recognize you know what it is about us that could be off-putting to another woman or other women women and be more compassionate to them so oftentimes now i find myself uh, like if I'm in a situation like that and I see that nobody really wants to solve the problem I just kind of listen and I'm quiet unless they ask me what do I think please don't ask me what I think if you really don't want the truth or you really don't want to know the answer because I don't really I don't really coddle I don't coddle dysfunction I don't coddle abuse I don't try to paint pictures that are not there I, I try to always walk in um, my truth. I try to walk in the truth of what's going on in front of me because I feel like people are, are gonna always show you who they are. Just sometimes we build this fantasy of them and we, not, we need to kind of like get out of the denial and really focus on what's in front of us and do something about it because we only have so much amount of time on this planet. I said this before in another video, we have a limited time here. Why spend all of it miserable with people that don't value us. They don't value us, they don't respect us, and they think because they have, and, and I'm talking about a woman and man relationship now, and they think because they have more options, they don't have to value us. That's when we have to step up and say, no, you do have to value me, but there's something that has to be different about you to make a man value you. We, sh we show people how to treat us by how much crap we take from them. So the moment they violate that space, uh, that boundary that you should have, you know, then you calling them to the mat. You saying, no, look, this is not good. This is not gonna happen. And you do what you gotta do to protect yourself and to stay in a healthy space. You don't let nobody drag you along for the ride. You say, no, that's not something I wanna do. I'm good. And you walk away and know that if that no matter how good you think that relationship was, and I've gotten into relationships because normally women get together to talk about relationship issues, excuse me, relationship issues or whatnot. Men, that's what women get together to talk about most of the time. Not all the time, but sometimes. Um, but uh, I'm not going to coddle uh the abuse of you i've lost some friend girls i've lost some friend girls because they would come to me and they pour all this stuff in and i'm listening and once they ask me what i think i just come all out and say what i think about it and i've actually lost some friend girls because once you tell me something and and i deem it as abuse 
I'm going to immediately stand up and say, no, this is unacceptable behavior. This is a huge red flag because I have experience in domestic violence. So I know how it begins, how it starts. And whenever I see that and somebody tell me and I say, nope, this one you're going to have to cut loose. Period. Like there is no, well, I should just pray about it. While you praying, he kicking your behind. You know, uh, just just like habitual cheaters. While you're praying, he's still cheating on you. He still have other women calling his phone or texting him or he's all in their DMs while you're praying. You know, while you're praying, uh, if he has other issues, like he's on drugs, he's still smoking crack. I don't know if the younger, the younger generation smoke crack, but back in the day, that was the preferred choice of drug because it was the cheapest and it got you high or whatever it made you feel. But if he's still using drugs, whatever his drug of choice is, you getting on your knees praying is not going to change him. He has to change him. He has to take um, power over his own life. It has nothing to do with the woman that he has on his side. And I get so tired of us women thinking we could change men. We cannot change men. They show us who they are boldly and proudly every single time they make a choice to step out and hurt you. Now it's up to us to take our power back and stand up for ourselves. And I believe we cannot do that without a healthy, strong uh, sisterhood to where we have, you know, a group of women coming together, motivating each other, uh, praying for each other, being each other's foundation when we when we fall. Because there's sometimes life will hit you so hard, you'll fall to your knees. And then you got that sister that's saying, come on, let's, come on, I need you to come on, get up. Let's get up. I'm going to walk with you. You don't have to walk by yourself. And being in a correct sisterhood, you're not going to tell any of your sister's business. You are your sister's keeper. So that means if she's told you all of this stuff that's happening in, you know, happening to her, you're not going to tell your next sister. You're going to keep that in strict confidence and you're going to keep that, you know, that uh, trust going that you guys have built. You're going to keep that. You're not going to betray them and give off their information so that's that's another thing we got to learn how to keep secrets as secrets and uh be kind and loving to each other but also be honest there are some women out there that's not going to want your honesty that means that's not going to be your group <laughs> that's not going to be somebody that you can have a sisterhood with and and you got to be okay with that you got to know that you need to be in relationship with people that are like-minded because that way you get this reciprocity. You know, I found myself also, because I'm such a, a loving and giving person, I found myself also uh, in relationship with people that were my assignments. They weren't my friends or my sisters. They were my assignments. And I got that mixed up because in the long run, me pouring into them and me being there for them it was like one-sided because I was just doing it all. And then they weren't doing anything but just dumping on me. All of their issues, everything. So I'm taking all this energy in. And most of the time it was negative energy. And then I got to find a way to dispel it and get it away from me so that I can be positive. Because, you know, energy does transfer. So I had all these draining relationships that I had hoped that there were going to be sisterhoods for me. You know, a sister... And that just wasn't true. So we have to learn how to discern who and when to let people into our lives and how, you know, what capacity or what level they're going to be into your life. You know, if you see this person that's in need, don't immediately think, oh, that's the sister, because that's how I am. I always wanted a sister. I had all those knucklehead brothers. And, and, and that's why I'm so tough right now because I had to fight all my brothers. All of my brothers. I had I have three brothers. I had to fight every last one of them. So I'm I'm a little tough, you know, when it comes to that. Uh, because I had to learn how to, to, to defend myself and, and everything else. But um, you know, we just have to learn how and when to let certain people enter our lives and know why they're coming into our lives at that moment they may just be in, in our lives for a season they may be your assignment uh, you got to take it as that um, because I tell you what if they're in a place to where they're hurting hurt people hurt you and I've gotten hurt so many times 
jumping the gun on relationships thinking this is somebody that God sent me uh, to be my sister and it was really somebody that God sent me to like pour into and nurture uh, perhaps if you may back to health a little bit because I am encouraging them I'm loving them I'm I'm praying for them but that's it that's not somebody that I need to possibly be connected to you know for the rest of my life and now there are some people that are connected to me I believe for the rest of my life because we have uh, reciprocity relationships that means I pour into them they pour into me I give to them they give to me we, you know we have something positive to gain from each other and i just absolutely love and adore those people and those people are a handful there are people i consider my friends um uh, that may not fit well in that category because they're always taken from me so i'm hoping there's a couple people that's in my circle i'm hoping will turn around and be able to reciprocate a little bit uh but if that doesn't happen then i need to recognize that's another person that's been um, necessarily um, may have been assigned to me to to you know but not necessarily a sisterhood that I'm gonna connect to for the rest of my life so that's what this video is about I pray that we all look at each other as um, sisters one day you know I'm praying that we can get there and not competition because that's another problem that some women have um, we're so competitive to each other because I think it all started a long time ago when there's there's so many there's so much lack of um, opportunities uh, for African American women, and so many times than not, even in, I mean in corporate America and even in other spaces, uh, we had to fight for the like one position. Like you have like maybe if you have ten black women and. and all of us are going for this one position that makes us competitive and then once we become uh, competitive it's hard to be in right relationship with our sisters because we're always trying to you know outdo them or outnumber them and i think it's time out for that i think we need to start being so competitive and i think we need to be more understanding and loving and supportive of one of one another because i'm telling you ladies we are all we really have at the end of the day i'm telling you this, this is coming from a woman that has raised, reared children. Like, I, my oldest child is um, in her 30s. And so, this is coming from, from a woman that's raised and reared children to know that at the end of the day, uh, we, we're all we really have. So, we need to develop this friendship and this sisterhood and support and love each other and be there for each other and not be in so much competition because at the end of the day your your children are going to grow up they're going to go off and have their own lives do their own things you know at the end of the day even if you get married that marriage i keep getting messages sorry that marriage may dissipate hopefully it'll be for a lifetime but we all know the truth that sometimes the marriage may leave and then your children leave your your spouse leaves um and then all of those um seasonal relationships they leave and and then you're just here in this space and wouldn't it be good to have sister you know sisters that surrounding you even if they're not your biological sisters that's there and you guys can enjoy and, and pour in into, you know pour into each other uplift each other and do amazing things together because we got this positive energy flowing from each of us and all we do is have um good well-being towards each other and so we're building each other up we're help, helping each other and another thing about the competition part um there were times when i was first starting real estate and i would reach out to other successful women of color and I would ask them hey how did you do this or how did you do that or what's the secret or what's this and all of them they, nobody ever poured into me I can honestly say neither one of them poured into me because they didn't want me to do better than them and I think that's sad and unfortunate but then my t my turn came and women reaches out to me and tells me and, and asks me the same question then guess what I do I don't do what the other women did to me I actually pour into them and I give women guidance and I say, okay, you don't want to do it this way because this way ain't right. 
this is the way you need to do it and i'm pouring into them and i'm i'm mentoring them, and and i have absolutely no problem with doing that for free i don't charge for that because i feel like the more all of us do better the more our communities thrive and grow and do better and then we can start building our own economy but we have to work together we have to realize that the sister next door to you is not your competition that's your sister that's somebody you should be engaging uh, but we have to be healthy to do that though the, the key to to having a great sisterhood together is to be healthy and what I mean by healthy, mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually, all of, all of those things have to come together and so that we can engage each other in a healthy manner. So there's still some work to be done within us. Then that's something we need to realize that we still need, you know, if you got work to do, then, hey, we have to, you know, even if you have to be honest to someone that you meet up front and you just say, look, um, you know, what you're looking for in a friend, I'm really not there yet. I've had somebody dump, did me like that before. I'm really not there yet. And uh, so I can't be what you need me to be. So I'm gonna go over here and get my stuff together. And then if you're open later to us being friends again, then, you know, we can do that. But I think we need to be honest about where we are and if we're even capable, because some, some people are not capable of being close to anyone. They're too scarred. They're too scarred. They're too hurt. And they're holding on to a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of us have trust issues. And trust issues, everybody think when I say trust issues, everybody think it's just about um, rom romantic relationships. No, a lot of us have trust issues just on everyday platonic relationships. We can't trust nobody. We need to work within ourselves on that. I, and, and we need to learn that God gives us all discernment. If we're if we're his children he gives us discernment but we also have to pray to god okay we want we know we're going to have discernment but we also want the knowledge and we need to pray to god for understanding so that we can just whatever we're discerning we have a, a complete understanding of what god is trying to show us and not misinterpret what it is he's showing us and so that's my little tidbit today on sisterhood i'm praying that we all can be loving and kind women of God, that we're loving each other, that we're supporting each other, that we're encouraging each other, and that we're in, we're, we're not coming from an empty cup, you know, that we're, we have a full cup and we have a lot to offer. And the people that we consider our sisters, our true friends, that they, they are reciprocating that with us. So that's how you can tell if you're in a healthy friendship, because you have both parties uh, reciprocating to each other. So that's what this video is about i encourage each woman out there not you know necessarily just my community but i encourage you to surround yourself with like-minded people uh use your discernment on when god do bring new people into your life so you can discern if that's an assignment if that's something that god wants you to help with but not necessarily put in your group of of friends or sisters you know because there's differences and um I say this because you don't want to be hurt like every five minutes I'm nursing my wounds because I thought this was somebody God sent into my life to be my forever sister you know my sister and then I find out she you know that person just stepped out walked all over me or hurt me because she was hurt and so hurt people hurt people realize that keep your distance i mean i'm not saying don't love and support them but keep a safe space between you and somebody that's hurting like you want to give them as much as you can but you don't want to get hurt in the process so just remember that the next time you meet somebody new because um i used to not be like this though i had some really serious trust issues i didn't want no friends no boyfriend no nothing i didn't want nobody bothering me i was in the shell and i was safe and god called me out of that because he's telling me that i you can't do the work i'm calling you to do and be in this shell because you can't reach anyone there and so he called me out of there but i used to not i didn't want any friends i'm good all people do is lie they hurt you they want to take something from you I was not in a healthy place. I was in a toxic place. And I had to be healed and cleaned and purged out of my trust issues. And trust issues do not necessarily come from a romantic relationship. Trust issues can come 
from as early as childhood because maybe you trusted in people or situations that was supposed to have your back or cover you and protect you and they didn't so then you develop trust issues towards adults well guess what that con that carries over into your your adult life so it starts earlier than romantic relationships and i always tell people please don't rate i mean rate your relationships as romantic relationships being more important than your platonic because really learning how to love people genuinely love and care for people starts so much earlier than a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a wife or a, a husband it starts so much earlier until we can learn how to treat the people that we are around every day mothers fathers sisters brothers aunties uncles cousins until we learn how to treat those people well, get healthy and whole enough to have healthy relationships with those people, we're not gonna have them with the other, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the husband, and the wife. It's not gonna happen. And then, you know, there are times when you see people, because a lot of women feel like, you know, some of us may say, why, well, you know, why am I single? I see so many of these women that, that are just dogs, or they just, they mess over these men and these men are just head over heels for them. You know, why am I single? Because you know what? Like traumas come together and they attract each other. You see two people been together for 20 years, but all they do is fight, bicker. They're in their crazy bliss. Like traumas attract. Energy, like energy attracts. So don't be <laughs> envious of seeing somebody in a relationship for 25 years when it's been pure hell. No, you want a relationship with someone that's gonna be that's gonna be so good that it's gonna knock your socks off. You're gonna be like, oh wow, this really exists. I didn't think it existed. Well it does. But it only exists with like-minded people, people that want the same things, people that have good intentions. And all, all you finding out all of that is slowing down, taking your time, using your discernment, praying to God for understanding so that you can let the right, safe people in your place. And you, in return, you want to be the right, safe person as all, uh, as well. So uh, it's been 20 minutes. I need to get in this. Oh, it's 9-11. I need to get in here. I have a class in a few minutes. But I, I, if you haven't done so already, click to subscribe on my channel and follow me, please. I'm going to post this on YouTube. But normally, I post these videos on my Facebook page before I, I post it to my YouTube channel. So I appreciate all of you, I love you, I encourage you to be the best that God created you to be and only accept the best from everybody that you call your, your family or your friend or your sister. Only accept the best. Talk to you later, bye-bye.